Awesome. Um, right, guys, we're going to get started. There might be a few people that will jump in along the way. Um, but thanks, first of all, everybody here that's uh, taken the time out to jump onto this call. Hopefully, we provide some value for you guys. Um, and we've got quite a few things lined up. So first of all, I'm just going to give you guys an introduction of myself and Yasa, our background of what we do. Um, then Yasa is going to go through things like common mistakes that a lot of people, especially that are new to the crypto space at the minute, uh, the mistakes that are clearly being made in terms of FOMO, um, listening to too much media and things like that. We're then going to talk about profit taking and strategies that we personally use and we can kind of give you some guidance in terms of what to be doing moving forward. Um, and then from there, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Bitcoin. We're going to talk about what it's done so far, what it can potentially look to do. And also, I'm going to highlight some of the areas on the chart that we personally picked out when we were actually predicting the um, crash of Bitcoin in the last week or so. Um, so again, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, and just to start off with a little bit of a background about myself and Yasa. So we have, um, well, we basically met in 2016 and we started working together around 2017 2018 where we actually built the trading field which i'm sure many of you are already aware of so what we do primarily is we focus on uh, foreign exchange we have a couple of services which is courses to teach people how to actually read the markets and how to profit from certain movements um, and then we also run what's called a signal service where we actually send the trades that we place throughout the week out to our members who actually follow those trades. Now, back in 2016, 2017, we were actively discussing the blockchain technology. We were talking about crypto quite a lot, which has led us to where we are today um, and actually being able to jump on a call with you guys to share some of our knowledge. Um, now, 2017, we made one, I think, yeah, just one crypto investment at that time, okay? And that was XRP, that was Ripple. So it was something we did quite a lot of research on and it was something that we were very comfortable uh, to be invested in for a decent period of time. We're still invested now. We have taken profits along the way. Um, and our course members, okay, especially our uh, the course we have at the moment, our gold course members are also aware of the other types of research that we've done um in terms of the other coins and the other uh cryptocurrency assets that we've been sort of interested in and invested in for quite some time so really what we're going to do today is just run through the thing that's on everyone's mind which i guess is what's actually happening right now what's happened in the last week where we are um in terms of this cryptocurrency cycle and we're just going to share our knowledge and our views on what's happening and also run through some of the things that have happened in the last week or so with regards to the 50% drop as well. Um, so myself and Yasa have quite a strong financial background. I worked in London um, for a portfolio management company called Morningstar. Yasa was working for um, St. James's Place as well. So we do know our stuff when it comes to finance and investments. Um, but now we're just here to share a little bit of knowledge regarding the cryptocurrency space and what's going to potentially happen moving forward. So what I'll do is just pass you on to Yasa, who's going to start talking about some of the common mistakes um, and things that hopefully you guys can, can pick up um, some really valuable tips in terms of how to actually come out of this market in a profitable way, as opposed to being like the majority of the people right now, which is sitting there thinking, right, I'm going to hold this forever. I'm going to hold this for the moon and hopefully we get there and take some profit eventually. So again, thank you for attending and I hope you enjoy this webinar. Cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so Matt's just given a uh, brief introduction um, on basically just our background. Um, so the first Welcome, Welcome to everyone, everyone and thank you for joining. And we are going to try and keep this as interactive as possible, just to make sure that you guys aren't falling asleep whilst we're talking. So uh, feel free to use the the chat um, and ask any questions that you may have. If you agree with something, then leave a comment. If you disagree with something, then also leave a comment. Um, and then we'll hopefully be able to get to those comments uh, either at the end of the call or as we go along. So whilst I'm not talking, Matt will be looking at the comments and vice versa. Okay, so Matt just mentioned our experience in the crypto space. As he mentioned, you know, we were the early investors um, back in 2017 as well. So we've kind of seen the highs and the lows of the market, um, seen, you know, 
the, the, the prize rocket and then come all the way back down and then stabilize and move sideways and, and seeing all the fear in the markets as well as all the hype in the markets as well. So, I mean, based on that as well and, and basically obviously running the, running the trading field, um, we've received countless amounts of DMs, especially recently, you know, people asking our, for our advice and our expertise on what to do next and what to buy and what to sell, et cetera, et cetera. So for that very reason, um, I actually, well, we actually gave out some, um, some calls on, uh, on our Instagrams. Um, so obviously we gave out XRP back in 2017, but uh, also very recently, I remember giving that out on the Instagram around, December time mm-hmm. uh, when it was hovering around the 20 cents region um, so I mean let me just get the do you want to share it do you want to share the screen so it'll be easier uh, let's just get the charts up just to show you guys the uh, the move that's happened so far so XRP as Matt mentioned already that is our favorite out of all the cryptos that are out there so as I was talking um, around the December region if you can hover around XRP, yeah. Yeah. So the call was given out around 24, 25 cents um, around that time. And then we can see what happened throughout uh, throughout this journey up until now. So we obviously experienced the bullish run um, roughly around, what, 600%? Uh, from there. Um, and that was all at a time where the SEC lawsuit came out against Ripple. Um, and there was a lot of fear in the markets that, you know, there were even exchanges delisting XRP and its classic manipulation, media manipulation, which I'm going to get into a little bit later in on the call and why not to listen to things like that, just to give you a little bit of tips um, and guidance on what to do when you see this kind of stuff in the media. So, yeah, that one experienced a, a bullish run of around 600% before now retracing. Um, we also gave about ARC. Um, so that's another one of our favorites as well in the long term. Uh, that was given out at 0.89, um, if Matt can just hover us somewhere around there. <laughs> so literally caught the wick on that one. Um, and that one moved up around 300%. And also CIS, which was given out around 0.12, around the same time. So it will be one of those, yeah. 0.12 which rocketed all the way up to 665 percent so collectively around 1500 percent now because of this we received so many dms um asking for you know more tips and more advice on what to do next and what to do and uh unfortunately a lot of the people didn't even actually take any profits which is actually what i'm going to be touching up on as well on how to basically maximize your profits whilst you experience these these bullish runs so you'll be glad to know that um Previously, all we had was as part of the gold package on our courses, you know, that's the only way that you could access the crypto content. However, due to popular demand and unprecedented amount of demand, we have now created a TTF crypto community, which will be released around next week. Okay. And that will give you guys the option to kind of have a look at crypto on a more regular basis and have our expertise because there's literally not enough hours in the day for us to go through our DMs and, and reply to everyone. Okay, so that's what that has been created for. You'll get the course, you'll get live weekly webinars like this um, alongside a lot more, uh, a lot more to be, uh, and it's very affordable as well. Okay, so it's under £200. Let's jump into the common mistakes and it's so underrated um, to, to avoid these kind of mistakes because if you can avoid losing money in the long run, what you're doing is actually making money, right? Because if you can avoid being in drawdown, if you can avoid losing money in the markets and you know avoid the traps of the market, you're technically making money. So it's very underrated. Um, but yeah, so let's, let's go into the common mistakes. Now, first, we're going to go into media. Okay, because there's a lot of things that come out in the media and a lot of it is just manipulation. So it's just a bunch of noise. Right. And a lot of it is down to, um, you know, whichever way the market wants to move, it will move and it will be you'll see many excuses coming out um, that will try and justify what's just happened. Right. Very recently, we saw um the the price of bitcoin just crashed as we predicted from 60k all the way down to 30k a 50 percent drop and that was justified by 
China banning cryptocurrency. <laughs> Anytime that the that the price actually falls, you'll see that article. China bans cryptocurrency. Right? It's just a scare tactic. Um, it's just a justification for the elites to justify what they're doing within this market because at the minute it is very unregulated. Let me show you a quick example of this so you guys you guys understand what I mean. All right. So let's jump into uh, the Bitcoin one back in 2017. Okay, if, as you guys can see, Bitcoin debuts on the world's largest futures exchange and prices fall slightly. Okay, what's that telling you? What's that headline telling you? And it was the Sunday, December the 17th. That headline's telling you by putting the word slightly in there, what it's telling you is it's just a dip, right? It's debuting on futures exchange, that's a big moment in Bitcoin's history, and what you should be doing is buying the dip as such okay falls slightly remember that now let's go onto the chart on sunday december the 17th and see what happened literally a lot of the time what you see in the media do the opposite do the opposite to what you see in the media we'll get there eventually there we go right. sunday december the 17th is there okay literally the highest point the market ever reached so it's trapping you into actually buying bitcoin at the very highs i've mentioned this before as well right within a financial transaction there's two parties there's a buyer and there's a seller for a financial transaction to be approved a buyer must have a seller and a seller must have a buyer okay now do you think the institutions are going to be buying at these highs Absolutely not. That's what the media. That's what the media is used for, to pump these prices up, to get the hype up around these coins, to basically dump it on the public, because they're the only ones that are going to be stupid enough to buy at those heights. Okay. So basically, that's what happened back then. Um, we saw literally the price never come back for three years, and people that listened to that article would have just been held holding that loss for three years. Uh, there's also. So yeah, just to jump in on that bit as well, because I'm sure there's people that are wondering here, what actually does that mean in terms of futures exchange? So essentially what that actually means is this is the first time that sophisticated investors could actually short this market in a large fashion. In, in, in basically, they could put a lot of money into shorting this market. So essentially what that means, it's the first opportunity that institutions and large funds and hedge funds, whatever it might be, were able to finally short this market because before that it was not available. So from that very day was the day that they could first ever do that. So that's that's what a future a futures exchange um, a futures contract is basically the option to either buy or sell a market. And that was when it was introduced on that very specific day. Yeah, good point. All right. So we'll show you another article as well very quickly. Which is this one, Bitcoin. Bitcoin falls further as China cracks down on cryptocurrencies. Okay, so this was six days ago, around the time where um, we experienced that um, crypto crash uh, where Bitcoin reached 30K, right? So you'll see articles like this, and the most important thing to kind of do is think, step back and think logically and literally do the opposite. A lot of the time, all you need to do is do the opposite. OK, um, the other thing on people's minds as well, and we received a lot of questions on this was Elon Musk. OK, a lot of these people, and I know people very close to me that were saying, you know, let's buy Dodge. Why, why would I not buy Dodge? Elon's pumping it. Um, actually, before I move on to Dogecoin, uh, let's move. Let's just show you an indication where Elon Musk actually bought, um, bought um Bitcoin, okay, so that was around I can't see it on my uh, around 35k, wasn't it? Yeah, it was 38k on the 8th of February, was when the news article came out, so that was when he actually um, announced it. Okay, so again, right, as we can see over there, we're literally at that time, we were at all time highs. Now, if we want to break above those all time highs, what do we need to do? We need to bring the buyers into the market. Articles such as that, when Elon Musk, I think they, Tesla bought around $1.5 billion worth um, of Bitcoin, was used to kind of create those new highs. 
okay? And what a lot of people actually forget is when Elon Musk is or Tesla are investing $1.5 billion, they don't need the moon. They don't need 200,000. They don't need 100,000 on Bitcoin, right? All they need is 20, 30%, and they've made hundreds of millions of dollars. Whereas the average investor is going to be investing a hundred dollars five hundred dollars a thousand dollars and therefore is going to be waiting for the moon they're going to be waiting for a hundred thousand dollars which just never comes okay and a lot of people even if you did get into that um into this bullish run uh, when elon musk bought bitcoin um would they have taken any profit even when it near enough doubled absolutely not a lot of the i mean 90 percent of people will be waiting for the moon they will not be taking any profits and look at where we are now they'll be actually being drawdown or at break even. So again, with media manipulation, with media articles, you want to kind of stay away from uh, being influenced by that and uh, sometimes actually do the opposite, okay? Uh, that brings me on to Elon again uh, with Dogecoin, okay? Now, another common mistake that people make is jumping in on hypes, okay? And maybe momentarily it will actually make you a bit of money. Fair enough, okay? But a lot of those people would be buying the highs, okay? But before before Dogecoin came into the media, it was hovering around where the where the cursor is right now. And people will be buying Dogecoin literally where it is on the cursor there. And now they'll be holding drawdown. I know people personally that have done this. People very close to me that have done this. And now they're sitting back thinking, is this coin ever going to reach those highs again? So this is the danger that you have when you are literally getting into pump and dumps, whether you're getting into what they're known as shit coins, which literally exactly what they are. Um, Dogecoin was created as a meme coin, literally as a joke. And it's, it is a joke uh, that is actually worth what it's worth right now. And if it can be influenced by one person's tweet, that just shows you how reliable and sustainable that uh, coin is. Okay, so again, avoid these coins. And if you are not investing into shit coins, and if you're actually investing into things like Ripple that we always push, you will never be worried about little recent dips or little crashes or any price movements whatsoever, because there's actually something behind that coin. There's actually something behind that project that you can get behind and know that at some point that mark that uh, the price is actually going to go back up whereas with dogecoin when it is just a hype you can be trapped into that position and you, you may never see those prices again okay um any other common mistakes yeah um so let's talk about the one that you guys must have heard of which is hodl 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 so for those of you that are new to crypto that don't actually understand what hodling is it is an acronym for holding on for dear life Okay, which is basically just saying, just buy it and just hold it forever and ever and ever. Okay, um, which basically is one of the dumbest things that you can do um, because you are all you're doing is hyping about unrealized profits when you experience a bullish run. Okay, so what you're waiting for is literally that you're waiting for the moon on XRP, even on XRP, for example. Like you know, what, what price is that? Thirty-seven. Yeah, yeah. I have absolutely no doubt that at some point within the next few years that we'll reach that level. However, if all you're doing is buying crypto, and before I jump into this, this is literally the source. <laughs> this is the secret source. This is the secret ingredient in making a lot of money in in these markets, and this is why um, you know we've learned to make a lot more money than others because we implement these techniques so if you're going to listen to anything on this call make sure you're listening up now because this is the technique to actually maximize your profits so in an ideal world what you want to do is actually hold a long-term portfolio and a short-term portfolio okay don't just put all your eggs in one basket and just hold hodl 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 for the rest of your life okay because that's just a retirement plan and you're never going to actually experience those gains that you've made so hold a long-term portfolio and hold a short-term portfolio. One for the long run and one to maximize of these short-term moves. Because let's go on to, if we can go on to Ripple. I want it. I want it. Yeah, just on the chart. Okay. 
So look at the amount of times that you would have experienced 200, 300, 400 percent returns on this market alone, right? But if all you're doing is just hodling for the long run, what is the point, right? You're I've seen so many people again just hyping and um, you know getting overjoyed about unrealized profits that you haven't actually banked. And what is the point if you are even if you're buying these lows? Look at how many times that price has pumped from the lows and come back to those lows. So at one point, say if you'd invested a thousand dollars, you could be up three thousand dollars, four thousand dollars, and at the end of it, you take absolutely nothing and you're back down to square one and you're waiting another three years or four years for that price to pump again and then it comes back down to that level again because there's so so much um so much manipulation going on because of the unregulated nature of this market so what i'm trying to say is if you have a long-term portfolio which you're leaving for the long run but also combine that with a short-term portfolio you can make a lot more money now let's show you a few examples of these matt's just drawing on a few stars just to show you the highs and the lows of um, of these recent moves within uh, XRP. Because what a lot of people will do as well, they'll be waiting um, three years, four years, because that is the nature of the Bitcoin cycle and the crypto cycle. If you really study it back in time, every three or four years, you'll get these huge parabolic moves. Okay, so back, when was it? 2017, the back end of 2017 and early 2018 is the last time we experienced the the most recent uh, parabolic move but before that if you look into bitcoin as well you would have seen that back in 2015 the same thing happened so it's every two three four years that this happens however the price then comes back and corrects by usually around 80 percent okay and in ripple's case literally 100 percent you would have ended up back where you started off so let's see even if you were uh and and the only reason why i'm saying this is not to kind of uh, look down upon people is because we've made these mistakes ourselves and the reason for us jumping on this call is to teach you guys not to make those same mistakes because it's horrible but right? there's no point being a thousand percent in profit and taking nothing from it so that's what happened to a part of our, uh, portion of our portfolio uh, back in 2017 where we were early investors in xrp we made a lot of money as you guys can see if you can just hover over where we would have invested at those lows over there and then seeing this parabolic move over the next three or four weeks okay seeing the price move literally 1250 percent in other in layman's terms that is basically 12 times your money if you'd invested ten thousand dollars that's 120 grand of unreal profits that you wouldn't have touched okay and then literally four or five months later you're back down to 10 grand that you'd invested what is the point so that is the um that is the reason why i'm saying the common mistakes is just hodling and hodling and hodling whereas you can see that even without being in a bull run because what people are doing with crypto is literally waiting for these bull runs to happen every three or four years and whilst it's quiet they're doing absolutely nothing now for you guys to really understand what i'm talking about and i have to emphasize this so apologies for going so deep into this but for you guys to understand what I'm talking about, it, you have to look at the other asset classes. And by that, I mean real estate, stocks, commodities, whatever it may be. I don't care what it is. Nothing gives you the returns that crypto does. Okay, if you look at stocks, you'll have an average return of around 8% per year. With the real estate, 6 7% a year. That is baby numbers in, in the crypto world. Right, because you can actually get that within a day. You can you can literally get 20, 30, 40, 50 percent, even a hundred percent within a week. So when you've got these short-term portfolios on hand, right, and if you just highlight every time when we're not in the bull market, right, when we're in actually in a bear market, look at these moves. If you can highlight the percentage gains on those moves as well. Right, that's a hundred percent. Within is this the weekly chart? Two weeks, three weeks. Again, two hundred percent in one week. In one week. Again, seventy-five percent. You get you get the gist, right? Now, if you've got a short-term portfolio 
on the side and you're capitalizing on these short moves and you're buying the dips and you're getting in at these very low prices, what is the point of just hodling and just waiting for the long run? Because for those three years, let's look at person A who's just hodling. For those three years, you're literally sitting there with your investments just gathering dust. Whereas person B, who has a short-term portfolio, to complement that long-term portfolio, can be taken. And I'm not saying you're going to catch the bottom and the top every single time. It's not going to happen. But even if you're taking 20, 30, 50% every single time, that makes a huge difference. You've got a return of 100, 200% at least over the year, as opposed to absolutely nothing. Yeah? So that is another common mistake, hodling. And if you really want to make a lot of money from this, this is the way to do it. Have a short-term portfolio and a long-term portfolio. 100% hold a long-term portfolio because this could be, you know, when you look back at the dot-com bubble and you look at the... Um, you know, you look at companies like Apple and Amazon, you're like, damn, if I'd invested into that when it was $5, look where, where it is now. So you don't want that kind of regret as such, um, knowing that you are one of the early investors and, and this market is still unregulated. You are one of the early investors. If you join in on, on this call, you are literally one of the early investors. Okay. So definitely hold a long-term portfolio. We can see Amazon there. Right, and it's something that we're going to see with a lot of these cryptos going forward as well. But it's not going to happen with shit coins. Stop investing in shit coins. Right, it's going to happen with one of these, um, one of these that actually have projects behind it. Not one, but a few of those. Right. Um. So definitely keep a long-term portfolio, but also keep a short-term portfolio alongside what you're doing as well. Okay. Um. And yeah, yeah and Mr. Two kind of just to, to finalize on that topic as well. Uh, to really understand what I'm talking about there, you have to look at where we've seen Amazon, right? You've seen this parabolic move over the last 20 years or so. And if you'd invested $100, we always, we always see this, right? We always see memes like if you'd invested $100, it will now be worth 200 grand, stuff like this. And this is the opportunity that you guys have and that we have collectively um when we are investing in something like this so if you look at that twenty five thousand percent so if you if you had a grand in there that is what <laughs> 250 grand yeah a grand yeah two, a grand is 250 grand in 20 years insane right so definitely you want to have something for the long run as well but what you will notice if you look back into the dot-com bubble as well and the same things happen when a new asset is introduced, we had something called the Tulip Mania as well, which, again, I'm not going to go into it. You can Google it. But it was basically a pump and dump scheme and, and tulips were worth absolutely astronomical numbers just from hype. Okay. And the same thing is going to happen with a lot of these cryptos as well. But some of them are going to survive and they are going to experience these kind of moves. And that's why we're so heavily invested into Ripple because that is the one that we feel like is going to be the one that is going to be doing something similar to this. Whereas the other, when you look back into the dot-com bubble, especially, which was, I mean, I was too young, but maybe some of you on this call will be able to remember um, that literally anyone that posted a company up and started a company up and just put dot-com at the end, everyone was investing into it. And the same thing is happening right now. History is unfolding right in front of your eyes right now anything with coin at the end right now like the dodge coin like people will laugh at this years later down the line and say what the hell were people thinking because one guy tweeted it and it had a dog as the as the profile picture and everyone invested in it and it was worth whatever it's worth right now it's ridiculous right so a lot of those will disappear same as a lot of these companies in the dot-com bubble disappeared and only a few of those remain, such as Amazon, Google, Apple, et cetera, et cetera. And the same thing is going to happen with crypto. So therefore, another lesson to learn is on, only invest in, in projects that you feel like are going to be here for the future. Okay? Cool. All right. So uh, I'm going to pass it on to Matt now. 
Yep. Uh, I was going to give you a little bit of an insight onto onto Bitcoin as well. Cool. Um, yeah, just before we do, does anyone have anything they want to say in regards to this last bit? Any messages? So I'm just going to respond quickly. So first of all, just someone said, um, will this recording be uploaded for later on so you guys can listen to it and watch it again? Absolutely. We'll probably whack it on the YouTube channel for you. Um, so yeah, you can do that. And the other question, which I think is also something we got on our DMs as well, is what platform is best to use for purchasing crypto? So there are obviously quite a few different platforms you can use. In the UK, you've got something called eToro, which I'm sure everything, I knew we get questions like that, um, which I'm sure is everything is, uh, is what people are aware of, it's like eToro. Now, the best ones to actually hold tokens, okay, is going to be the likes of Binance, Kraken and Coinbase. Um, Binance, you pretty much have any coin that you can think of apart from really, really new coins and obviously, you know, ones that haven't quite got um, as much backing behind them. But otherwise, Binance is probably one of the ones that would favor the most, I would say. Um, in terms of actually depositing fiat money, fiat currency into the account, we personally use Coinbase because, again, of the safety and security. And then we use Binance to actually purchase the coins that we wish to use. Um We've got, We've got one more question, question as well. Is it still, still a good time to buy XRP? Yeah. It's always a good time. <laughs> it's always a good time to buy XRP. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll go into this a little bit later in on the, on the call. Um, but when you're buying XRP, again, um, what I would do is, again, have that long-term portfolio and a short-term portfolio. And hopefully you can get to a point where you've got enough holdings for the long run and then you can capitalize on these short-term movements within the short-term portfolio. And again, what I would do is if you've got $1,000 to invest, I would not be putting $1,000 into XRP at $100 right now. No, no. Right? Um, especially when, you know, Matt's going to show you how we are looking temporarily at least um, bearish on the crypto market. We can experience potential drops on all of these pairs which will give you an opportunity to buy these uh, buy these coins at a lower price. So if you've got $1,000, I would dollar cost average my way into XRP right now, um, which basically means buying a proportion of the coin. So if you've got $1,000, you might buy $200 now. Okay, and if it drops to 80 cents, I might put another $200 in or $300. And what you're doing that way is actually bringing down the average price that you bought in at. Whereas if you bought $1,000 worth of XRP right now, all you've done is put all your all the uh, disposable income that you had at $1. Okay, and this game, like we've just shown so many times when, we, when we've used the measure tool to show you the percentage returns, it's all about percentage returns. And what you want to do is maximize those percentage returns. And the only way that you can do that is bringing your average price that you bought these coins at as low as possible. So again, if you've got $1,000, use $200 now. If it drops a bit more, whack another $200 in. And ideally what you want to do is bring that average price down to 50 cents or below. Okay. Um, those of you that took the course on Instagram or have, have taken you know the, the course or whatever and um, have used um, our course, they would have it way below 25 cents and been accumulating for, for a long time. So where we are right now, the best thing that you can do is just average your way down. Okay. Yeah, cool. Um, and yeah, just in regards to that as well, you just always, when you're, when you're actually investing in these coins, you have to always think about the same way that we do for Forex trading is you have to think about that risk reward. And um, when you look at, for example, Ripple right now, purchasing, purchasing it where it is right now, for you to gain 100% on that, you're going to need it to reach 2021 highs again. Okay, not saying that won't necessarily happen, but... If you are actually a little bit more patient and you wait for something like a dip down into potentially this area, which is where we, we would be focusing on it, getting back to those levels is actually giving you twice as much return. So the importance of obviously being patient and not getting FOMO like Yasser spoke about earlier is, is one of the key, key things. Um, Leon's obviously just asked as well, how do you mark out the charts and stuff? So when we introduce this, this TTF crypto community, there's going to be a lot of chart work as well. Um, it's slightly different than how you mark out charts when it comes to Forex trading. Um, in terms of one, one of the main differences 
you focus, focus on, on the higher, higher time, time frames. So, so you need to be focusing on the monthly, the weekly, and the daily time frames. Um, the rest of it is just noise, okay? And that's what's, what you need, to, you need to realize. So you need to wait for these kind of strong levels to be hit. And what I'm going to do now is actually just run through BPC. We kind of covered quite a lot already um, with what Yas has already mentioned. Um, and I guess one of the key takeaways really is to is understand, understand how much, how much manipulation, manipulation there is in this market. Okay, okay. we've, we've obviously, obviously pointed, pointed out quite a few bits, bits in, terms in terms of Elon, Elon Musk. Musk. We've pointed we out the out futures the launch, launch, which actually yeah. dropped the price right. and created the 2017 yeah. high. Um, um, and and it, it, it really, really doesn't, doesn't end there. There's, there's more manipulation in this market than there is in any other market, simply because it is unregulated. Okay, so just jumping onto this BTC chart right now. We're going to start, start at, I guess, guess the, the April, April COVID lows. Okay, so obviously Bitcoin had its journey up to 20K, just shy of 20K, um, and then pulled back down for the next pretty much three years. And the last point at which we were at the lowest point in the last three years, okay, was 3,800. Okay, and that was the last point before Bitcoin went on this kind of parabolic unsustainable, unsustainable um, growth, growth and rise all the way up to 62k or 64k i think it was um and as you can see it's just something that you don't really see very often especially in any other markets any other asset class to see something grow and, and uh, rise so quickly like this it has to raise those warning flags and if you know what happens in this market and the amount of manipulation that actually occurs this is where for example myself and yasser actually step back and start to think right what could happen next okay what could happen next and we were thinking around the fifty thousand dollar level as well okay we were thinking fifty fifty thousand dollar level it's a key level for this market um and again the market just absolutely flew through that with the help of Elon Musk and the news that then came out there. So what we, I think the main thing that actually made us really start to consider that there could be a turnaround happening very, very soon, apart from the fact that it's massively unsustainable to see $2 trillion coming into the market in the space of two or three months, was that everybody was interested in crypto okay everybody was interested in crypto no matter where we went no matter who we spoke to no matter how many dms we got on instagram everybody was asking the same question i want to buy this is this a good price to buy i want to buy this and one of the main ones that kept coming up in for me personally was uh, ada which is cardano and because it had a rise of 1500 percent in such a short space of time it had obviously caught attention it had caught media attention and that, and that then encouraged, encouraged many other people, people to start jumping on after, after it had jumped 1500 percent which is just a crazy crazy thing to do um and it was around that point where we sort of sat there and discussed and thought you know what this is exactly the same as what happened in 2017. in 2017 everything everyone was buying crypto everyone was interested in crypto people that had no understanding whatsoever was buying, buying Bitcoin, Bitcoin, we're buying Ripple, Ripple we're, buying we're buying literally shit coins that nobody, Bitcoin. they probably don't even exist anymore, simply because everybody else was doing it, it was all over the news, okay? okay. So we started so to think around this kind of 50,000 level, 55,000 level that there has, has to be a slowdown, slow okay? So, so I'm just gonna drop down, down on the weekly chart, chart. And, and as you can see, I've highlighted the area, which is where Musk where actually Musk got involved in the market. market. And as we and mentioned, mentioned earlier, he yeah, invested 1.5 billion, billion. Yeah, yeah, he invested, invested 1.5 billion, billion into, into the market, market. Okay. okay? And as you mentioned, mentioned, he doesn't, he doesn't need, need to wait, wait for the moon, moon so, so that we all call it. Uh, uh, he, he doesn't have doesn't to wait for the moon, moon because 50% growth for him was 750 million, million okay? okay? And conveniently, which, which as you as can you see on this chart, chart that was right around this level here, which was the absolute perfect first sell-off of this market. Okay, exactly, exactly that, that point, point where he would have been at about 750 million up. Okay, okay. does that, does that mean necessarily that he would have started, started dumping there? there? Maybe. Maybe. Um, but as, but you, as can you can see, see this, this kind of structure, structure here is showing, showing some real, real distribution, distribution of, 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 of asset. Okay, and what, what that, that means is it means that sellers are now becoming involved in this market. Now, now if I drop, drop, drop down, down into the daily time frame. Okay. okay, we start, we start to, see to see these, these kind, kind of highs and lows coming in, in, but they're they're, they're being they're not really creating very 
uh, you know, they're not moving much further each time. So, for example, this one here, we're looking at 58,000. It pushed just to 61, and then we had a bounce back. This one here, 61,000 was the previous one. We then had that 64. Okay, now, classic technical analysis tells us that once a trend is broken in terms of highs and lows, okay, we are then potentially going to be changing direction, okay? And then when you put those factors in with the fundamental factors that everyone's buying crypto, that Elon Musk has already made 50% growth from his investment, that you're seeing this distribution coming through on the charts itself. You're seeing, for example, if I just highlight a couple of areas for you, you've got here... The sellers, the sellers are very, are very strong. strong. These big black candles here, here. Very, 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 very strong. strong. Okay. Slow, Slow movement back up. up. And then and again, again, you get some big, strong, strong candles pushing us down, down. again. And, and then the then final, final one, one okay, okay, which was this, this one, one here, here, which actually broke, broke our previous leg, leg okay, yeah, at 51,000, was, was literally about two weeks worth of just purely, purely negative moves on Bitcoin. And they were so, so strong. So... Those, those that actually, that actually follow, follow us on Instagram, Instagram and, those and those that actually saw, saw what we posted, posted, it was actually this candlestick structure here, which is where I posted the um, prediction that actually I believe Bitcoin would drop. And as we can see, we had that another the next visit to that 50% growth for Elon level at $58,000. Okay, and that's the last point and the highest point we've been at since. Okay, so a huge, huge drop. Okay, huge, huge drop down to $32,000 again in the space of about two weeks. Um, and it's just one of the main reasons is it's just not sustainable to grow, to, to literally have such a parabolic rise without having corrections in the market. Okay, so the reason why we chose the 46,000 level is because this was our leg. Okay, this was our leg here, as you can see here, $46,000. We actually reached that level to the, the absolute perfection before pulling up and rejecting that 50K level again. We then broke the 46 level. We came all the way down to 39, I think, which was my other level. And then my last level was 32, which we matched actually three days ago. So the question is, where are we going now? Okay, where are we going now? And those of you that invest in things like stocks and shares and those that have a basic understanding of chart analysis, We'll know, we'll know that, that markets, markets tend, tend okay, okay, let me just get the right tool for this. Um, markets tend to move. If, if we're in a bullish market, markets will do this, okay? They'll create a high. They'll come and retest that high, create a low. They'll make a high. They'll come and retest, okay? That's precisely what they do, okay? Can everyone still hear me? Because I've just gone really quiet for some reason. If someone can just type and let me know that you can hear me okay. Okay, cool. Um, all right, perfect. Um, so this is the kind of structure that you'll see in a bullish market, okay? And as we can see on Bitcoin, that high, since we broke that high, okay, back in um, December, since we broke that high, we have not come back to retest that level, okay? And that is one of the reasons why we personally are calling this 20,000 level on Bitcoin. Now, personally, I do think it's probably gonna go a little bit lower, okay? It will probably spike into the regions such as, one second, it will probably spike into the regions of 13,700, which I've got marked here and maybe even lower. But just because we have this bearish bias on Bitcoin doesn't necessarily, we, doesn't necessarily mean that we believe it's gonna go there straight away. So for example, we don't believe that this is necessarily the high right now and we're gonna go straight from 40K to 20K, okay? We believe that this is where we are heading and this is our target, but there might be a kind of a fake out as such, right? So we, we actually believe that potentially there's gonna be a trap occurring in this market, okay? We believe that the bias is bearish, okay? And we believe that there is a potential trap which is gonna encourage people to be purchasing and encourage people that actually this is just a dip, guys. Buy, 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 keep buying, we're gonna make new highs, okay? And if that is the case, if that does occur, we have to actually look at upside targets and look at where we can potentially be shorting this market from or where we can potentially be thinking of getting out of any positions from. So the levels, again, come back into play for me, 46,000 to retest this kind of level that we broke. Um, let me just get the arrow tool. Okay. So that is a potential uh, you know, outcome for this market. We could push back up into that 46,000 level, which is where we broke quite strongly. 
and then we could start to make leeway down towards that 20k level we could have an even bigger trap okay we could start breaking fit 46 we could even push towards 50 so that then the news articles are going to start coming out btc is back above 50k again coming like you know next next target 100k that's the kind of things you you need to look out for because that will be the trap okay um and we personally believe that this is the kind of region that we could come to before we actually start to look for that downward move down to 20k now i could be wrong in terms of the fact that we could be rejecting 40k because it's a nice round figure it's a psychological level the bears personally i don't think the bears are done in this market yet and i do believe that we have that further downside coming it's just a case of when so when it comes to the ctf crypto community as well i will be highlighting um altcoins as well alternative coins okay whereby we'll be actually highlighting valuable zones which is a lot of questions that we've been asking where's the best price to get in at on this coin where's the best price to get in at this coin we aren't going to be showing you every single coin under the sun we're going to show you ones that we believe have value behind them um, but we'll be highlighting the areas to watch out for so that if you are looking at accumulating these coins in your short-term or long-term portfolio we can give you the kind of ideas of where valuable points are to make sure you're picking these things up at a discount and you're not following the rest of the crowd um, and actually buying things a lot higher than perhaps you should be so that's kind of it from my side on bitcoin and prediction wise of what we believe that, that, that could potentially happen next we are still expecting a drop down to 20k um, and if, if that does happen, then happy days, we get another sale, which is fantastic. And let's just hope this time it doesn't take three years to materialize and make some new highs again. A lot of the questions that have been asked personally as well is, you know, fair enough, you've called these corrections, um, you've seen the drop and you called it, you know, well done, but what do we do now? Okay. And uh, what are you personally doing right now? So it's an important question to answer. And I think, um, to answer that question, uh, as I just mentioned, you know, we need to look at the higher time frames as Matt as Matt mentioned. And with this, with on Bitcoin, we need to look at how this weekly candle closes. We're now on what is it, Wednesday? Um, so we're midweek right now, and we need to see how this candle closes. Now, if this candle closes above 46k, technically that will be a bullish engulfing candle, and we may have to shift our bias temporarily to see whether these um, whether the market is now going to go and retest those heights. Okay, potentially before we see the fall. But we can only go what we see right now, which is if you look at the size of those previous two black candles, which are the weekly candles, we can see that they are very, very bearish. Okay. So that's all we can go up right now. And for me personally, this goes back to my point of having a long term portfolio and a short term portfolio. Okay. Because for me, what I'm doing right now is with my short term portfolio, I'm just playing with that. Okay. And what I'm doing is literally make it, making 20% and getting out of the market. So for me personally, those of you that have been asking those questions, that's all I'm doing. So yes, I am buying those dips, but I'm not waiting for the moon anymore because as Matt mentioned, we've seen $3 trillion come into this market. How much more money is going to come into this market? It's ridiculous. And people that are saying this is not the moon, that, you know, when is the moon? Well, bro, there's like 15,000, 1,500% that you've seen on most markets. How much more do you want this this market to go in such a short space of time? And the higher it goes, the harder it was it will fall. Trust me. So for a more healthy bull run, you need to see these corrections anyway. But for me, because I have the, or for both of us, we have the the bias that we are temporarily bearish at least. I don't want to be stuck holding these positions at such highs. Okay, for me, this is very very high to be buying anyway. But that doesn't mean you can't make money. You can make money, but I would not be waiting to the move. So what I'm doing personally right now is even when the market fell, I bought a few things. And at the start of this week, we are now 30, 40% up on those. I took profits at 25%. I'm even out. So I've lost out on a little bit of profit, but at least I've banked something. Okay, that's the difference. A lot of these people will just be buying and holding out and holding out and holding out. Whereas... There's, it's just unrealized gains that you guys are playing with. Well, not you guys, but the, uh, you know everyone else is playing with and hoping for the moon. So that is basically what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm playing with my short-term portfolio and I'm just looking at 20, 30% because if this market de does then fall, then I've made my 20% and I'm out. I'm not waiting for new highs to be created. 
okay? My long-term portfolio is for that, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's basically what I'm doing right now. The other thing that I wanted to touch up on as well, uh, which I missed out earlier in the common mistakes section, which is FOMO, okay, which is an acronym for fear of missing out. And I see a lot of this happening right now, uh, and you guys must have seen it. You might, you might have even experienced it yourselves, which is basically the fear of missing out because everyone's talking about it, everyone's making money from it, when a lot of people aren't actually making any money from it because they haven't actually taken any profits. And chances are that those that, you know, I'm not saying that we only have this, uh, this knowledge or this strategy of taking profits along the way with a short-term portfolio, but those people that haven't taken any profits, the chances are they're going to be waiting for the moon and seeing every correction as a, as a dip to buy and be stuck holding losing positions. And this is how people lose money trading crypto or trading anything for that long for that matter so the fear of missing out is basically when literally everyone is buying and everyone's potentially you know saying that they're making money from it and that this has happened and this has happened and um literally you'll end up buying where matt's just drawn on the line and you'll end up buying there and holding a loss for the next three four years before potentially breaking those highs Right. And the difference between smart money and dumb money, I've, I've actually covered this before on, on one of my stories, if you follow me on Instagram, is the difference between the smart money and the dumb money is that, you know, the bottom line where Matt's drawn on, or even lower than that, actually, is where the, the, the smart money would be buying. OK, when the rest of the of the uh, the market is fearful, that's when the smart money is greedy. OK, and vice versa. When uh, when people are being greedy, that's when they get out of the market. Okay, that's their liquidity, and that is uh, the financial transaction where they find the sellers to be able to, uh, th they find the buyer, sorry, to be able to sell their holdings off to, and make and make money. So the fear of missing out again is when you are buying because you're seeing the price just skyrocket, 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 and a great scenario is where match is drawn on the top line there people would, be, would have been buying around the 58K region because all you're seeing is green candle, green candle, green candle, green candle. And psychologically, it's natural to think it's going to continue. And what the hell? I've just missed out on 300% of gains when everyone else has been in the market or I've seen you know, my next door neighbor buy a Porsche or whatever it may be. And Elon Musk has bought it. Why shouldn't I be buying it? Right? And it's fair enough that you might get the FOMO, but what you need to do is wait for that market to correct do not ever ever buy the highs whichever weekly candle it may be on okay whichever point it may be on do not buy highs because you could be stuck holding that for a long time and being drawn down for a long time so always if you drop drop down to the to the smaller time frame maybe even the four hour <clears throat> maybe even the four hour you can see after every move okay you do get a pullback whether it's significant or not you can always find a better price than buying the highs, always, okay? So always wait for those kind of corrections, look at these charts and be buying those dips instead of just buying those highs because you've got the fear of missing out. So yeah, that's uh, basically what I wanted to cover on the fear of missing out. And again, I just wanted to final touch up on this because I've mentioned it a lot and. Uh, Sorry to be doing it, but I really want to help you guys out with the way that you are trading right now. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I recommend having that short term portfolio. Okay. Because the amount of money that you could, that you could be missing out on because you're just waiting for the highs to be broken and then the, those highs to be broken and those highs to be broken whilst not profiting along the way is just crazy. And only when you start to take those profits. That's when you've actually made money. When it's, when it's unrealized profit in equity, you've made nothing. Okay, you've made nothing. You've got nothing to show for it unless you are taking profits. And the great scenario, if you can go back to the Ripple chart on the weekly. <clears throat> if we've still got those drawings on. <clears throat> and even, and, and you know, I'm, I'm wary that a lot of the people don't have a lot of money to be investing into this uh, into this space 
Um, they don't have, you know, twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars to be putting in on every dip to make, you know, twenty percent, which is five, six grand. Because when you do that, there's five, six grand in a day or two. That's a lot of money to be making. But what you need to bear in mind is if you are doing this regularly and consistently, what you'll be doing is building up your money anyway. So for example, you've got a thousand dollars. Okay. You catch a 50% move. You take those profits. You now got $1,500. Now, when the next dip happens, you've now got $1,500 to invest and so on and so forth, right? You catch another 50%. Now you've now got $2,250 to invest. Okay. And suddenly your portfolio is growing. Whereas, where is your portfolio if you're just hodling? It's at the same level. Okay. Because it's just there in unrealized gains. Whereas your short term portfolio, you can build up like this. And this is how you make more money. Money makes more money. Okay. And this is the way to do it. Have that short term portfolio, grow that portfolio. And then, like I said, it's all percentage gains. So more money equals more percentage, which equals more profit. I can't stress that enough. That's one thing that I wanted you guys to, to take away from this. And 99% of people, I guarantee, don't do it. So if you're on this call, please take that away and uh, implement it yourselves. Um, let me just, uh, and also guys, if you've not understood something, this is your time to please just mention it in the, in the chat. Uh, don't think it's going to be a stupid question because everyone starts somewhere and there's a lot of people that are brand new to this anyway. I want to make sure that you guys actually understand what we're talking about. Or if there's something that you don't understand that you want us to cover, then uh, please ask that in the questions tab right now um, because we'll be closing off pretty soon. Um, more of a theoretical question, but in your opinion, is crypto a better hedge against inflation than commodities? Absolutely not. No, I don't think crypto is a better hedge than uh, commodities. Absolutely not. Because one, we are still in an unregulated market, okay? And the fact that one person's tweet can either send that market flying or drop in, is that a good hedge? When one person literally can control the market, right? Whereas if, if you've got things like gold, which has actually um, been around for so long and has shown a track record of the market behaving in a rational manner, that's definitely better than, than crypto in my, in my opinion. Uh, Binance looks super complicated. Can you demo at some point? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's in the course as well. It's in the new uh, crypto community. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 not too complicated unless you're looking at leveraging and then you have the isolated margins that you need to deposit um, some of your money. And that comes in if you're shorting the market, really. But other than that, it's it's not too difficult when once you get the uh, the hang of it. But yeah, I mean, is it good to trade all coins with the same technical analysis? Um, Yes and no. Uh, again, there's a there's a video within the TTF crypto community which covers Bitcoin dominance, okay, and that shows you how um, how a lot of the altcoins actually follow the cycle that Bitcoin follows, okay. When you say you've seen Bitcoin fall fifty percent, and then you've seen all of the other cryptos fall fifty percent or even more, okay. So they actually follow um, what Bitcoin does. So what I'm trying to say is when technical analysis comes into play, especially within an irrational, unregulated market, sometimes uh, technical analysis goes out the window, uh, but you can still use the basic principles of technical analysis to, to justify your decisions. Um, uh, so the new club is crypto signals from yourselves. Uh, yeah, we will, we will be giving out um, some, I'm not saying that it's gonna be there like, you know, literally on a daily basis because you shouldn't be trading crypto on a daily basis anyway. Uh, but when dips happen or when we see uh, areas of interest on the chart where we see, you know, you potentially you can make 20, 30%, then yes, we will be there to help you on your uh, short-term portfolio journey. We actually wanna, want you guys to learn something more than anything. Um, it's not just a case of jumping in a group and let's all buy this and let's all sell this. And, and we want to actually educate uh, grow and develop together um, and ensure that you know we will be putting selections out there and we will be researching specific coins and we will be giving you insights in, on what's happening um, but more importantly it's a case of actually learning and understanding what's happening with all cryptocurrency and cryptocurrency
United States and how we move closer and closer to more regulation in the space and how we move actually into you know blockchain technology as well and what companies we can potentially move forward with it. So you know it's not just that we're going to be sending signals every single week and say right guys let's buy this right guys we're going to sell this like and to be honest I don't think we'll be selling anything. Nah I mean with with selling crypto um or stocks for that for that matter if it's not leveraged the maximum you can make is 100% and that's if it goes to zero. Sorry my battery's running out. Right. Um so we won't really be selling anything but as Matt mentioned we are going to be I've just realized that it my screen doesn't actually pop up does it because I'm talking to yours. Um so you guys okay so um the most important thing for us is to basically educate you guys and especially the newbies that are joining this market market space um with an alternative view and a realistic view as opposed to because a lot of people what they're doing right now is jumping on YouTube and finding videos right to, uh, what's going to happen with bitcoin next what's this crash all about and what you have to understand is that these guys have an alter an alternative alternative um motive which is um couldn't get my words out then <laughs> it's been a long hour um an alternative motive um which is that they want views okay and if they say bitcoin's going to crash or bitcoin corrects itself and it may move sideways sideways um then that's not very exciting is it not many people are going to click on that so they need clickbait they need to get views up they need people to subscribe to their channels and that's why they do it when really that's just bullshit right we're here to give you the real news of what's going to happen next what we think is going to happen next whether that's the market moving sideways whether it's going to move down whether it's going to move up okay we don't have a motive to say that it's going to it's going to keep going it's going to keep going up because like i've just shown you can still make money in a bear market by making 20 30% in a week that's more than enough for me um okay so the next question is how much is your course um before it was 1500 pounds 1500 pounds um for you guys to actually access this crypto content now it's under 200 pounds just because more. and there's tons more because we're literally if you could see the board right now <laughs> we've got so much content to record and so much more uh content that we've already added um because a lot of things have happened since the 2018 and 2019 content that we created before and Yeah, we'll be updating that on a regular basis anyway. Um so yeah, it's under 200 pounds just to make it affordable affordable for literally everyone. And like I said, with even the short-term portfolio if you're making 20 30%, if you've got a grand, you can make that back in a week. The main point here is just to make it affordable just so we have enough people. That's why we always ask you guys to share because we try and give the the realistic views and we don't try and just hype something up just because we need views on YouTube. Okay? Uh next question. So again, <clears throat> uh, prediction on Instagram that we believe Bitcoin is dead in three to five years. So, I mean you put it on your Instagram recently as well. Uh I guess first of all, we're not necessarily saying that it's gonna go to zero, like it's literally gonna go to 20k and then zero just like that. Um realistically, over time we will probably see 20k met and then we will probably see highs taken out again. I would I would say you'll probably along the same lines as me with that. Um but what we have to think about is that Bitcoin is the first of its kind and the, the most important thing is we've got so many altcoins now and so many altcoins that have better use cases that are faster that are cheaper there are so many reasons why Bitcoin is unfortunately falling behind um and the, the main one we're not in the main one but it, it takes it can sometimes take up to 5 or 6 hours to send bitcoin from myself to yaso 5 or 6 hours with ripple it takes 5 seconds and that's just one of the many things to do with bitcoin um, <clears throat> yeah there's many more reasons uh one is the the time it takes to do exactly the same thing ripple takes a lot less time um and the fees as well bitcoin's a lot more expensive um than ripple and then i think the most important thing is the fact that it's trying or it was created to be a peer to peer peer to peer um a a peer to peer can't even talk anymore <laughs> a peer to peer um financial um payment <laughs> god i'm getting tired now um and 
the fact that it's trying to, you know, it was created by these revolutionaries who think that they're going to overthrow the government and uh, literally get away with banks and, and, and not need banks, etc. It's just not going to happen. Like, whoever thinks that needs to wake up. I mean, as much as I'd like that to happen, because you know what I think, but um, it's not going to happen, right? Whatever the, whatever the government want gone, they'll make it gone, right? So that's why, for another reason, I actually prefer Ripple because it does exactly the same thing. And rather than trying to work against the institutions, it's actually working with the institution. Um, and there's many more reasons which I don't want to go into right now. Uh, but another one of those, for example, is it's the one that's been hyped the most. And people think they're going to, they're going to become millionaires and billionaires from investing into Bitcoin when more, more than likely uh, it's going to be the one that's actually going to make people broke. Okay, and it's always the hidden gems. And again, you have to do your own research behind this when you look at like the reason why I mentioned the tulip mania and the digital age that we'll, we'll, we will all remember is um, the dot-com bubble. Okay, a lot of those just went to shit. And a lot of those that were being hyped went to shit and went to zero. Okay, because there was actually nothing behind it. I'm not saying there's nothing behind Bitcoin because there is, you know, user cases behind it. I'm saying that there's a lot more um, alternatives out there that um, can be done a lot better and a lot cheaper and work with the institutions rather than against them. So, yeah, that's just some of the reasons. There you go. You guys can have a first look at our, at our website and uh, TTF 2.0. So, yeah, what does it include? So it's lifetime access to the TTF crypto course, which, like I said, is being updated, has already been updated, and it's going to have a lot more content coming uh, soon. Access to regular updated course material, access to TTF crypto community group, where you guys can just ask questions and uh, just liaise with each other, get each other's um, uh, tips and views as well. Uh, crypto market news and updates, so you don't have to go through YouTube watching bullshit. Um, also, what else have we got? Regular coin and token research. So if we find another crypto, uh, find another coin, you guys will be the first to receive it. Uh, recent top picks, long-term portfolio selection, buying and selling zones, profit-taking strategies. So yeah, and a lot more. Okay, so that's what's included. <clears throat> so we're going to mention the ADA. Uh, I think we just got a lot of questions about what do we think about ADA. Um, personally, we're not actually invested into ADA. Um, and secondly, if I was looking at getting invested, I would be waiting for one hell of a drop before I wanted to do that because that is pretty much Bitcoin all over again. Um, in terms of buying it right there, it's just not valuable right now at all. Um, just another thing that I've uh, had on my personal um, as well is how to spot like uh, pump and dumps and how to spot dips. If you see a market move in a parabolic manner, okay, and then if you see it come down as quickly as it went up, that most likely signifies a pump and dump. Okay, as we guys, as you guys can see, even on this chart here in 2017, that is not buying the dip. Okay, that is not buying the dip. If you guys, if you can just hover over this, uh, yeah, this bit, yeah. So you can see how it went up within four weeks, and within four or five weeks, it came crashing back down. Okay. So if that happens, and if you spot that on a chart, that's more like that's most likely uh, a pump and dump. Not always, but I'd say eighty percent of the time, I would not be buying that. Okay, expecting a quick move back up. Right. I'm sorry if you've already answered this, but in the next four to eight months, what's the realistic price range for XRP? Um, <laughs> drawn toes there. <laughs> yeah. Let me just delete those. Uh, yeah, so XRP, obviously, as you know, one of our favorites. Um, in terms of technical analysis on this, you can see that. Um, in terms of technical analysis on this, you can see the levels that I've got marked out personally at the moment on my weekly. So the most important level right now for where we are, okay, is that. We are currently around that one dollar level, so a nice brown figure. And at the moment, we've smashed through it very, very strongly with a big bearish candle. Okay, so because we're rejecting this level right now, we've been popped up this week so far. Obviously, this at the minute you've got to realize that everything is mimicking Bitcoin. Okay.
Okay, we were even sitting yes, uh, yesterday looking at the charts and we looked at about six different cryptocurrencies and everyone was exactly the same. Okay, the movements are exactly the same. So the range at the minute for, for Ripple and where I can see it, quite honestly, is actually floating between these two levels here. Okay, 1.02 and then maybe as low as about 0.8. Okay, but and until we move out of that range, we don't really necessarily know what's going to happen. Um, but if Bitcoin does make that movement that we believe it will do, which is to the downside, then we can start seeing enough drop into these, these other levels now as well. Oh, um, so the last question we've got here is, will we be giving signals prior to, to buy and sell? As already mentioned, we're not going to be sitting. Well, we'll be, we'll be telling you when perhaps to look at taking, taking profits. Profit, yeah. We're going to be telling you to short things. No, we won't. Uh, we don't really recommend that. We very rarely do it ourselves um, because this is a long-term vision for us and a long-term um, investment as well. Uh, will you be training us to identify opportunities? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Um, and also with that as well, I remember receiving a question within my DMs uh, or in my the questions tab that I had. Um, it doesn't really matter if mine dies anyway because I'm connected to it. Um, so another question I had was, how do you keep your emotions in check when you see uh, the price literally dying? And the, the answer to that, and the biggest tip I can give on that, um, without going into too much course content here, um, the, the biggest tip I can give on that is always have a trading plan. Okay, so with your long-term portfolio, for example, Ripple, um, we hold a lot of Ripple okay a lot in the hundreds of thousands of ripples and for us when ripple falls by every 10 cents we're literally losing 20 or 30 grand okay um by just moving 20, 10 cents and if we were looking at short-term price movements of ripple and seeing price just fall and staring at our, uh, at our portfolio and seeing the price drop by you know, twenty, thirty thousand dollars every single time, or even when it moves fifty percent, we just lose a hundred grand just like that. That's going to drive you nuts. That's going to drive anyone nuts. Okay, uh, no matter how um, strong you are psychologically. So for that reason, what I would recommend is always to have a trading plan. Okay, always have a trading plan. What and what I mean by that is personally, I don't care what happens with Ripple. Ideally, I want it to drop even more. To be honest, so I can add on to my holdings. Okay. And the, what's that? Okay, uh, because I, ideally I wanna even grow my holdings even more because I believe in it so much for the long run. But in the short term, what you need to, what you need to um, bear in mind is when you have a trading plan, which is basically, I don't wanna sell Ripple below $10. So why do I care what's happening in between? And I'm not gonna sell it at 50 cents or take profits at $4 or $5. So I really do not care what happens in between until it gets to $10, okay? So the best way to kind of switch yourself off mentally and psychologically is have that trading plan. Have goals, have targets and think, okay, fine. So if your target is the same, like Ripple, you wanna start taking some profits maybe at all time highs, which is $3.3. Whatever happens in between is just noise. Like, who cares? You're not going to sell at 50 cents. You're not going to sell at $2. You're not going to sell at $3. Your plan is to sell some at $3.3. So until that happens, who cares? And that's why I always say with a long-term portfolio, switch your emotions off. With a short-term portfolio, you can capitalize on making these moves and you make money either way. That is, that is it. Um, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope you found it, found it useful. Yeah. Any final questions? Just give you a couple of minutes. And if you're afraid to just write it on the chat, like our DMs are always open. Like we pretty much will answer and help you guys out as much as we possibly can. So if you've got any questions regarding your holdings, regarding things that you're looking at, um, just feel free to send us a broken message. And um, yeah, I think as well at the moment, like anyone that's looking at crypto and looking at certain coins. All you really have to do at the moment is have a look and watch Bitcoin because everything is following Bitcoin right now, um, especially over the last week or so since, since the large drop. Yeah, and that again comes into uh, understanding Bitcoin dominance, um, which you can see on 
on the charts at btc.d. If you type that in. Um, so that is the Bitcoin dominance chart. And again, I'm not going to go into what this means on this on the webinar because I'll be here forever. It's a, it's a long topic. and But you can use this chart uh, and use the Bitcoin dominance figure to understand what's happening with Bitcoin, the amount of money that's flowing into Bitcoin, whether money is now flowing out of Bitcoin and into altcoins, which then signals uh, whether potentially you've got a uh, an altcoin season coming as well. Um, and as you guys can see, we're at a crucial level as it is right now anyway. Um, we're ranging at the minute, um, but you guys can see we're at a crucial level, which is why I said that we need to wait for um, the weekly closure to see actually what happens um, with Bitcoin and the rest of the, uh, the crypto space. Cool. Okay, cool. I think there's no more questions. Uh, thank you for all of you that have stayed. I know it was longer than I uh, expected. Um, and yeah, hopefully we'll see you on the other side. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining, guys. Have a good night. Thank you very much, guys. Mm -hmm.